What do you mean, do I feel jealous over someone getting a 12? Not really. I don't, I don't really, it's not very important, actually. Um, uh, the highest price artists, a lot of them don't produce much painting. You know, so that's all done with the glamour of the auctions. And uh, I made a lot of money, uh, okay. If you take what the yearly gross is of an artist, it's a different story. I'm right up there. Yeah? And I'm making, well, I'm making more money than I need. I'm giving it away. I have a foundation to give money away. Uh, for me, money was uh, uh, buying time. You know, so I didn't have to work, you know, I could paint full-time, that was the object. And then the rest of the money is very irrelevant, you know. It's nice to know people like the work, and, and it's, um, the audience seems to be increasing very, a lot in the last ten years. I guess uh, I like doing it. When I was a kid, I liked doing it, and uh, I liked doing other things, but I always liked doing it, and it was like that. I never, it was never, um, it just sort of drifted. It just, uh, one thing led to another, and finally it became a, a hard drive, ser serious artist, but it didn't start out that way. I thought to be an artist you had to be a genius or something. You know, it was that 19th century idea. And I knew I wasn't a genius, I didn't have too much talent, but I, with hard work I got to be good at that. Well, my father thought an architect was the highest thing a person could be. And an artist was right under that. And he didn't think a doctor or a lawyer or a rabbi or a priest were anything, <laughs> you know? He didn't think they were. Had, they, he didn't think they contributed as much to society as an architect or an artist, or even a businessman. So they they were not. Uh, my mother thought I would have an unhappy life if, as a fine artist, and she was right uh, for a while. They had twenty-minute poses, and I'm used to poses that went on for for three, four, five days. So all I could get in 20 minutes was two lines on the paper. And after two weeks, the teacher never spoke to me. And he finally said, get a larger pad. And I said, I'm going to go through the floor on this place. <laughs> I won't be here in one year unless I do something desperate. So um, a desperation, we were painting with, uh, with temper. I took the brush by the back and started on the woman. And, and, and in about 10 minutes, I made a woman that looked like an ape. And uh, he grabbed it and showed it to the class and said, this is the real stuff. <laughs> All these illusionistic drawings that were really terrific. He thought, this is crap. And he said, this is the real stuff. And immediately, all the guys came over behind me and said, what's going on? I said, this is crudism. And I am the master, and you all have to follow me. <laughs> I find how things are very, uh, have a, a very strong narrative thing. They tell you, they're, they're always telling you stories about people, which I don't like at all. Uh, I, I mean, I prefer, I mean, guys have done masterpieces with that, and, and this stuff is certainly uh, uh, big time. But uh, I like things that just have to do with optical appearances. It finally got to the point where I realized I don't like narrative art. Yeah, at all, because I'm trying to, what I, what I ended up going into was trying to get into the immediate present. And there is no narrative in the immediate present, it's all sensation. So actually, I think of my paintings as realistic, and I'm trying to paint the sensation when you first see something. When a modern artist, you're supposed to be inspired by the people who just preceded you. But uh, I, I think it's an open book, so I like Duda Morrow because he's kind of a nice bohemian, you know, fancy bohemian, which is the world I live in. And I like uh, Tutmus, Nefertiti sculptor. I like Matthew Brady photos when I was doing it, you know. I like Cezanne when I started. And, and it's all over the place. And you just look at different things and they, um, 
you, you can take whatever you want or use whatever you want. I like billboards, I like 60s TV, all those things are factors. And movies of the 30s and 40s movies and 50s movies, I thought, were just visually fantastic. Ada's pretty spectacular, you know? And she's sort of like, she said once, two more inches I could have nailed Mrs. America. <laughs> and she wasn't kidding, because she's the same measurements as Miss America, and her face is as good, everything's perfect, okay? Ada graduated college at 18. It would have been, it would have been 17 <laughs> if she didn't take a year off, okay? Ada was number one, wherever she was, and she didn't take any girl courses. She beat all the smart Jewish boys, and, to, and it was totally humiliating to the smart Jewish boys to have a little Italian girl beat them who never said anything. <laughs> so Ada was always number one. Ada was the best social dancer I ever met, you know? She's like a fantastic social dancer. Forty years after I danced with her the first time, I found out she had never done, danced my style before. I thought it had gone to Brooklyn College. It wasn't. Ada can dance with anyone and make anyone look good, you know. She, she danced with Alan Wingate at his wedding, and she, he was twirling and she was twirling and the, the wife got jealous. <laughs> If you do a big painting, you're completely knocked out and you have a choice of either sleeping or running. Either one will make you feel good, you know? If you go to sleep, you'll feel okay, and if you go running, you'll feel okay. And most of the time I go running. And I, I think I came from an athletic family, and the Queens, uh, where I grew up in Queens, it was like the people, the, the guys I met on the street were all athletes. So we, our, our social life was all around athletics. So it was a part of me that was quite different from the people in the art world.